So I made some uh, lactic acid bacteria syndrome. Syndrome. <laughs> Whatever that is. The dried leaves and berries are ground up and made into cigarettes by a single-hand machine. The deadly narcotic is not quickly and easily prepared for its market. I made some lactic acid bacteria serum. Uh, or I shouldn't say I made, I guess it's more like uh, I collected because I didn't really make anything. I just collected some bacteria. So now before I get started, I just want to say that I'm not a pro. I'm a total, total beginner. This was my first time making this stuff. I just like to learn and I like to document what I learn and then put that out and, and, and you know, turn it around and put it out there so that it might be beneficial for you as well. Before we get started really quick, I just want to give a shout out to Marco is Growing, Autoflower AK, and Mindfully Rooted, all three of these guys on Instagram. I've chatted with all three of them about natural farming. Man, they're just great, great sources of knowledge, a great resource. I highly encourage you to go check them out and follow them on Instagram. So lactic acid bacteria, or lab, or LAB, whatever you want to call it, is, it's just a microbe, man. It's a food safe microbe that's often used to make like yogurt and um, pickles and other fermented foods. We sometimes call it like a beneficial bacteria. That's really what it is. Um, we also call it probiotics. Think of like live cultures that you find in yogurt. Pretty much the same thing. When you put this stuff into your soil, it's going to help break down all of the organic matter in there or any dry amendments and stuff that you have. And it's going to convert all of that stuff into available nutrients for your plant to uptake. So this bacteria is like a workhorse. I also hear that it can help keep alcohol producing yeasts at bay and it can also help uh, keep anaerobic conditions at bay. So super helpful. It's also a probiotic for beneficial soil organisms. You could use it as a foliar feed. There's just huge benefits of this stuff for our plants, for our soil. You can make your own bokashi with it if you're interested in that. If you're familiar with bokashi, if you're not, um, that's something of interest too that you might wanna look into. Super easy and super great resource to have. It's great for animals including me and you. Remember, this is like a super probiotic, healthy serum. So you can drink some of this stuff. It's going to be really good for your gut. It's going to help balance out any off-balance bacteria. It can even take away your diarrhea because we know ain't nobody wanting no diarrhea, man. And this one's pretty cool. It can even be used topically to treat eczema. I'm not exactly sure how, but still. It's pretty cool. It could be sprayed into your compost pile. It could clear clogged drains. It can help control odors. Man, this is just really some pretty magical stuff if you think about it. And here is how I made it. So I started off by soaking some rice in some water for about 15 minutes, stirring it like eh, maybe once every five minutes. I can't say that I used a specific measurement. I think I did about two cups of rice in about two cups of water. After it sat for 15 minutes, I strained the rice from the water, which left me with a cloudy white rice wash liquid. I ended up using my pour over coffee filter to do this. Um, I didn't have a strainer handy that would keep the rice out, but after doing this, I think you could probably just pour the liquid in and be good. I then covered the jar with a paper towel and placed it on top of my grow light for warmth. Because uh, right now it's winter time, it's a little chilly, so I put it on there. I've read that warmer temps are going to help speed up the process. So I put a beanie, a thick beanie, between the jar and the light um, just so that it wouldn't get too hot. After a few days, it ended up separating into three layers, thin on top, thin on bottom, and a big layer in the middle. And that big layer in the middle is really what we're after. 
I took a whiff and it just smells a little bit sour. It doesn't stink or anything, just kind of smelled a little bit sour. I attempted to use a turkey baster and I'm embarrassed to say that I think this is the first time that I've ever used one of these in my life and I'm obviously not a professional turkey baster master. So bear with me, man. I'm hoping this goes smoother next time or I might just figure out a different method. So I measured out a quarter cup of the middle layer, added it in, and then added two and a half cups of milk for a one to 10 ratio. I ended up doing this twice since I had so much. So I ended up with these two mason jars of the stuff. After that, I just stirred them up and covered them. Now, online, I read that this should be done as anaerobic as possible, meaning sealed with no oxygen or air getting in and out. But some of my natural farming friends said to just cover it with a paper towel or a cheesecloth. So I did one of each. The one you see with the brown lid, I actually took that off and put a paper towel over it with a rubber band. The other one, I put the lid on, but I barely screwed it on so that any air and gases coming out it would allow that bottle or that jar to burp a little bit. I stuck it back on the light and within a few days, it looked like this. It divided into two layers. The top layer is like curds and the bottom layer is just like a liquid, which is what we're after. You can see the one with the paper towel over the top. It seemed to tighten up and separate really well compared to the one that had the lid on top of it, but both of them seem to work just fine, so I don't think it really matters which one you prefer to go with. Um, I think I'm going to choose the one with the paper towel over it just because it separated so clean and nice. I scooped the curds off the top and combined the bottom liquid layer into one single clean jar. I actually ate some of the curds and I fed some to my dog, Sophie, and she absolutely loved the stuff. To me, it kind of tasted like a, f like a fancy cheese. I guess. Uh, and it might sound gross and it looks gross, but you know what? Remember, this is like a really good, healthy probiotic for your body. So if you think about it, like cheese is pretty nasty sometimes too. It smells like, it smells like dirty socks, right? So it is what it is, man. You can also just throw it into your compost pile. You can feed it to other animals, whatever you want to do with it. So at this point, I had a choice. I could either leave it as it is, put a lid on it, stick it in the fridge, and that'll be my finished product. Or if I wanted to keep it at room temperature, I could have mixed it with equal parts brown sugar or molasses or some other type of sugar source. I chose to just stick it in the fridge. From what I understand, either way you go, it's going to be good for at least a year. So that's it, man. That's how I made my own lactic acid bacteria or collected my own lactic acid bacteria. I'll be making some videos in the near future using that to make other natural farming inputs as I learn them. And I'm just going to document them and publish them and hope that they help you out. So stay tuned. So have you ever made your own lactic acid bacteria? And if you have, I'm curious to know how you use it in your garden or in your home, or I'm just curious to know how you use it in general. So leave a comment below and let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped you. Happy growing. See ya. Nicotine, alcohol, good drugs. Coincidentally, tax drugs. Ooh, how does this fucking work? The deadly narcotic are ground up and made into cigarettes by a simple hand machine. Bruh.